we shall commence this module by discussing about inflation inflation reduces the real purchasing power of money in the economy generally inflation is considered bad for the economy and price stability is the main objective of planning in any country if the inflation is not controlled it can lead to disasters in the economy inflation as measured by the wholesale price index has remained above 7% since 2009 in the year 2013 the inflation increased to 7.5% in india after starting this module you shall be able to know about different types of inflation understand the relationship between inflation and interest rate evaluate the cost and benefits of inflation let us now discuss some of the basic definitions inflation in economics inflation is defined as a sustained increase in the general price level of goods and services in an economy over a period of time anticipated inflation it is defined as that rate of inflation which everyone correctly anticipates unanticipated inflation it is that rate of inflation which people are not able to anticipate hyperinflation it is defined as that rate of inflation which is more than 50% per month this rate of inflation implies very large increases in the price level stagflation it is defined as that rate of inflation which is a combination of inflation and slow economic growth and high unemployment now we will discuss inflation and interest rate the interest rates are the important influencing variable in the economy they are the prices that link the present and the future there are two interest rate being considered in the literature with nominal interest rate and the real interest rate the nominal interest rate is the rate that the bank pays to its customer whereas the real interest rate is the change in the purchasing power thus the two rates can be expressed in the following manner expected real rate of interest is equal to nominal rate minus expected inflation in other words according to fisher the expected real rate of interest is the nominal rate less the expected rate of inflation the equation implies that nominal rate is equal to expected real rate of interest plus expected inflation rate the equation implies that in the short run the nominal interest rate reflects both the expected the real rate of interest and the expected rate of inflation but in the long run the real rate of interest returns to the full employment level r star also in the long run the actual and expected inflation converge that is inflation is equal to expected inflation thus nominal rate is equal to r star plus inflation in other words in the long run when all adjustments have taken place an increase in inflation is shown fully in the nominal interest rate this also means that a rise in the inflation rate leads to a one to one rise in the nominal interest rate this is so as in the long run the real rate of interest is unaffected by the monetary disturbances in the process of adjustment from short run to long run there are different paths for interest rate depending on the expected inflation rate the following diagram shows one such possible path as you can see in figure 1 the path of interest rate in the diagram we measure nominal rate of interest on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis the figure shows that at time t0 the rate of interest falls initially and as the output increases the inflation rate also increases which leads to a rise in the rate of interest thus rise in the rate of interest is exactly equal to the rate of change in inflation that is i0 i1 is equal to delta pi the adjustment path consists of following effects the liquidity effect which donated the impact of increased real balances on the interest rate as shown by the declining portion of the nominal rate of interest 
the income effect which is shown by the upward rising portion of nominal rate of interest here the increase in nominal income increases the rate of interest by increasing the quantity of real money balances the long run income effect it is called expectation effect and it shows the impact of an increase in the inflationary expectations on the nominal interest rate moving on to discuss the social cost of inflation the important question is is the price level important yes the price level is important if prices do not change and income change preferably increase then the real purchasing power of the person increases and he is on a higher indifference curve that is he is better off than before but the real problem occurs when prices change suppose the prices increase by 2% and income also increase by 2% then the real income remains constant and there is no change in the satisfaction level of individuals there are different cost of inflation depending on the nature of inflation we first discuss the cost of expected inflation there are five different cost of inflation and we discuss one by one the first is shoe leather cost this is one of the important cost which inflation imposes upon the economy when inflation rates in the economy rises then the nominal interest rate also rise this rise in the interest rate leads to a lower demand for real money balances this leads to a fall in the amount of money held in the hands of public thus this will lead to more frequent trips to the bank to withdraw money in simple words there will be more frequent trips to the banks which will lead to more wear and tear of the shoes and thus these costs are called shoe leather cost and they increase with an increase in the inflation rate second is menu cost it refers to the cost associated with printing new menu cards an increase in inflation leads to an increase in the prices of the commodity which makes it essential to print new menu cards the more frequently the inflation rate changes the more frequently the menu card will change leading to a rise in the menu cost the third is inefficient allocation of resources in the economy the inflationary pressures in the economy leads to more variability in the relative prices in the economy which distorts the allocation of resources in the economy tax distortions the inflationary pressures in the economy create changes in the real income but the tax system in the economy considers only the money income thus the real tax liability is altered it often result in changes that law makers did not intend for example consider the capital gain test suppose the inflation rate is 10% and a person bought some shares at a price of rupees 100 in 2012 suppose he sold the shares at price rupees 110 in 2013 in the process he has earned rupees 10 per share and this will be taxed but if the inflation rate is 10% as assumed then in reality he has not earned anything this happens because the tax system does not take care of inflation thus this is an important cost of inflation in other words as the tax system does not take into account of the inflation rate an additional cost is imposed in the system fifth is inflation correction the inflationary pressures in the economy causes real changes in the economy and therefore there should be some correction for it next is cost of unexpected inflation the unexpected inflation imposes more social cost to the society than the expected inflation first it arbitrarily redistribute wealth among the individual economic agents suppose there is a loan agreement between two individuals a and b and the anticipated zero inflation but suppose positive inflation occurs it would affect both the individuals if a happens to be the creditor and b happens to be borrower the debtor then the real interest that data b pays to the creditor a is less and vice versa and thus due to inflation the real return changes and this results in arbitrarily redistribution of wealth second 
the individuals who are receiving fixed pensions are also affected by inflationary pressures. Due to positive inflationary pressures, the real purchasing power of the pension falls down, which leads to an increase in cost of unexpected inflation. Third, businesses will invest less in long-term projects because of the uncertainty of returns. Periods of inflation also tend to redirect investment from businesses and towards hard assets, thus depriving companies of the capital they need to grow and expand. Next, we shall understand the benefits of inflation. There are three benefits of inflation, namely senorage, the option of negative real interest rate and the money illusion. We shall discuss them one by one. Senorage. In an economy, there are three types of deficit financing. First, the sale and purchase of public bonds. Second, increasing or decreasing the tax rate. And third, money creation. The third alternative, that is the money creation, is also called seniorage. It is one of the benefits of having inflation in the economy in that it reduces the tax burden of the people and also it reduces the public debt in the economy. Next is the option of negative real interest rate. Another benefit of inflation is that it is able to use monetary policy in a larger way to increase the aggregate demand in the economy. This will help recover the economy from recession. This can be seen by the following example. Consider two economies A and B. Both these economies have a natural real interest rate equal to 3%. Also, both these economies experience same recession in the economy. Let us say that in the economy A, the central bank maintains an average inflation rate of 5%, thus implying a nominal average interest rate equals to 8%, that is 3% plus 5% is equal to 8%. As a matter of policy to combat recession, the central bank decreases the nominal interest rate from 8% to 0%. This will result in a reduction of real interest rate from 3% to negative 5%. This reduction will have a strong positive effect on aggregate spending. And finally, the monetary policy reduces inflation in the economy. This is in contrast to economy B. In economy B, a similar recession results in a decrease of real interest rate from 3% to 0% thus leaving a small role of monetary policy in the form of increasing aggregate spending in the economy. The third benefit of inflation is one that arises from money illusion. This can be explained with an example. Consider two situations A and B. In the former situation, suppose the inflation rate is 5% and the wage increases by 1%. This increase in wages leads to an increase in the employment. However, in the latter situation, if the inflation rate is 0% and the wages decline by 4%, in both the situations, real wage decrease is 4%. But if we try to see the mindset of public, we shall observe that public would be better off in first situation. This happens due to the presence of money illusion. Thus, it is generally said that inflation greases the wheels of labor market. Now, we shall discuss the inflation and indexation. After examining the cost of inflation, we shall now discuss possibility of reducing vulnerability to inflation by indexation. It is the process by which government tries to adjust the wages and debt for inflation. It is done in the case of bonds when either the interest or the principal or both are adjusted for inflation. In the case of long-term bonds, it is done by specifying the rate of interest and the inflation rate. For example, if 3% is the real interest rate and 5% is the inflation rate, then bond holders will get an interest rate worth 8%. In this way, the bond holders are compensated. In the case of wages, the labor contracts in many countries are adjusted for inflation. This is done in the form of a provision in the contract. This provision is in the form of cost of living adjustments. For example, if the money wage rate is W and the inflation rate is 5%, then the wage earner shall get 
wage rate equal to W plus 5%. In this way, the wage earners are compensated. Let us now recapitulate what we have learned from this module. Inflation is defined as a general rise in prices which is continuous and persistent over a period of time. The anticipated inflation is expected inflation and the unanticipated inflation is unexpected inflation. The social cost of anticipated inflation includes shoe leather cost, menu cost, inefficient allocation of resources, tax distortions, inflation correction. The social cost of unanticipated inflation, redistribution of wealth, negative impact on the fixed income groups. Next is benefits of inflation, senior age, negative real interest rate, money illusion. The relation between the inflation and interest rate is explained using Fisher's equation. Indexation is a process by which cost of inflation is reduced in the economy.